The light from distant stars and galaxies is all we have to go on when it comes to studying objects in space. They are so far away that we can never physically reach them, nor can we record their gravitational effects directly and individually. So the light emitted is what we're left with when we want to study them. Light can tell us many things such as the distance to objects, what chemicals they're made out of, how big they are, and loads more. But before we can begin to analyse the light in this way, we need to understand the way light travels through space and how it's changed by the universe. Waves emitted from a stationary object are not the same as waves emitted from moving ones relative to observers. You can imagine that as a source of waves moves towards you, the frequency of such waves increases. Moreover, the distance between each crest of a wave decreases or its wavelength shortens. Light isn't the only wave in the universe. You can see this with any wave type. I'm sure you're all familiar with the sound an ambulance makes and how the pitch or frequency increases as it approaches, only to quickly decrease and change in pitch as it passes. This is known as a Doppler shift and happens because of what was described earlier and because sound is a wave. For the case of light, the decreasing of wavelength or increasing of frequency causes it to be shifted to the bluer end of the spectrum, so we call this blue shift. When the light source is moving away from us, it gets shifted to the red end as its wavelength increases and frequency decreases, which of course we call redshift. Redshifts are more common than blue shifts in astrophysics as most objects in space are moving away from us and so their light is being redshifted. However, this is where we must consider redshift more closely and in two different cases to gain better insight. We know the universe is expanding. Everything not gravitationally bound in our local group is moving away or receding from us in what's known as the Hubble flow. Essentially, the Hubble flow represents the expansion and how everything moves away from each other. The redshifting of light associated with the Hubble flow is known as cosmological redshift. This redshift can be used by cosmologists to represent time as things that are far away are redshifted more, and the further away they are, the further back in the past the light from them was emitted. Therefore, things with larger cosmological redshifts, we are seeing them further back in the past. This is incredibly useful in testing models for our universe and has allowed us to probe features of the early universe as well. However, it's important to make this distinction of cosmological redshift as there's another type in space known as Doppler redshift. Similar to the Doppler effect of sound mentioned earlier, Doppler redshift is caused by what's known as peculiar velocities. These are the internal motions of objects which aren't caused by the expanding universe. Take for example a spiral galaxy which is viewed side on from Earth. The stars which make up the galaxy are orbiting around its centre and in our line of sight half of the stars are moving towards us and the other half are moving away from us with respect to the centre of that galaxy. This means that the stars moving towards us will be slightly blue shifted and those moving away red shifted. This is analogous to the Doppler effect I mentioned earlier, only now imagine an ambulance driving in circles on a roundabout with the siren on. Not only would the person in need of medical assistance never receive it, but the sound you hear as a listener stood next to the roundabout would increase in pitch when the ambulance is moving towards you and decrease when it's moving away from you on the roundabout. This is exactly what's happening with the peculiar velocities of stars in spiral galaxies and hence gives rise to a Doppler redshift. Now obviously most objects in space will have a mixture of Doppler and cosmological redshift, so it's important we know how to interpret both to best physically describe the system. Doppler redshifts help with understanding how the object is spinning, whereas the cosmological redshift, which is typically much larger and stronger in effect, can be used to test models for universes. Those are the two different types of redshift in astrophysics. There is also a third type known as gravitational redshift, which is due to the curvature of spacetime which changes the wavelength of incoming light. Yet cosmological and Doppler redshift are the most prevalent. If you've learned something new, please like and subscribe, and I thank you for watching.